Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar. It's on headless CMS. And the speakers are Mushfiku Rahman, software engineer from SJI. And the second speaker is Sushmita Das, junior front-end developer from SGI. I'm Sadia Afrin, hosting this webinar, uh, currently working as a software project coordinator in SGI. Also, my co-host is Afras Budhani, junior software project coordinator in SGI. So now you guys must be thinking about who SGI is. So about us, who we are. SGI is a New York-based web development agency established in 2004. We are located in five countries. The locations are New York in USA, Goa in India, Dhaka and Silet from Bangladesh, Ternopil from Ukraine. And the current team size is more than 140. Our mission is to continuously work hard towards client success, as well as to have a happy productive work phase workforce working together with the same vision. Now, I'd love to tell you about our company culture. The core culture we live by is to be humble, to do great things together, work to make clients successful, to take accountability, to embrace challenge and grow yourself, and lastly, help each other. So the core cultures are six for SGI. Now let's jump in to our services. The services we provide are design, web development, mobile app development, QA testing, AWS server support. Talking about our achievement. In web development category, we have listed 100 in clutch top B2B companies in New Year 2021. Also, in INC 500, we became official member in 2021. Also, in November 2021, we became top-rated talent in Upwork. Now, if we talk about our team. Our team is proficient in React and expert in SaaS applications and completely skilled in headless CMS architectures a prerequisite for omnichannel content delivery. We are also glad to say that we are an official solutions partner as well as vendor for content stack, which is among the top three headless CMS in the world. We are among the largest certified team of experts in this field. We also handle massive websites consisting of hundreds of pages and help prepare the platform where adding or removing or modifying contents or pages can be done within no time. Now, if we see who we are working with, the clients. Among our large client base, you can see, includes Fortune 500 companies, such as the prestigious Johnson & Johnson and Janssen Pharmaceuticals. Now, let's jump in today's topic which is headless CMS. I'd love to request Shushmita Das, junior front-end developer, to get started on this topic. Uh, thank you, Sadia, for introducing me. And welcome everyone for being with us today. Today, we are going to have a talk about the most trending topic nowadays, the headless CMS. Headless CMS. Some of us may already have some idea regarding this and some of us may have no uh, have not any clue regarding this. So no worries. Today we will try to cover at least the overall basic idea about what it is. So before jumping on the topic of headless CMS, don't you guys think that we should first know what is CMS? So if we go to the internet and Google, we will find there's a plenty of definitions and explanation regarding the CMS. So we are going to have a simplified uh, definition for the CMS. Moving on to the next slide. We can see that CMS is the abbreviation of a content management system, which is a tool that helps you build a website without needing to write all the code from the scratch. And what is the amazing part here? You don't also have to know the coding at all. So uh, let's think, in, think like this way. I need to paint a dress. 
but I don't know how to paint or I don't even know how to draw the patterns, then what I will do? I will go to the market. I will buy some ready-made wood bases, some colors, and I will paint my dresses. In that case, what I am doing? I am doing the role, I'm playing the role of a content manager who doesn't know how to create the, how to create and code. So what I am doing here, I'm playing the role of a content manager. Then who is going to create those patterns and the designs? That part will be done by the developer. The developer will creating those pages, will drone the architecture of those pages. So as we can see, it's not only making things easier for us, at the same time, we are also having lots of other benefits. As you can see, it has reduced the maintenance cost. It has almost zero dependency. And actually, it saves a huge amount of time and efforts. It has simplified the content management system. And most importantly, it's SEO friendly. So uh, we will see that there's a plenty of CMS architectures are available. But today, we won't be talking about all of those architecture, we will be talking about these three architectures. So some of you might be thinking like, uh, if the topic is headless CMS, then why are we covering the traditional CMS and decoupled part? So before uh, going to the headless CMS, we need to cover those topics so that you guys can understand why this headless CMS is so trending and being so popular among the time. So moving on to the first CMS architecture, the traditional or coupled CMS. So as we can see that it's also called the coupled CMS. And why is it for? The backend part and the frontend part is tightly coupled. Uh, for example, uh, I have to change something in the front end of my page. Then what I have to do? I have to go to the back end. I have to modify my code. And after doing that, I also have to see that if it's breaking anything, if the responsiveness is okay and everything is going well. So as you can see, there has a high dependency. So uh, why people do use this type of architectures? This type of architectures is actually ideal for blogs, personal sites, and <clears throat> the small companies which have very basic websites. Uh, there are some examples of these traditional CMSs like WordPress, WooCommerce, Drupal, Magento, they are using this traditional architecture. So uh, let's go to the another architecture, the decoupled CMS. When this decoupled CMS came, it just separated the front end and back end part and created a bridge through API. And how this decoupled CMS works? The front end uses the API to call the data, to pull the data from the back end and display. So there are some examples of the decoupled CMSs, WordPress, Drupal. So there might be some confusion that uh, if WordPress is using the traditional CMS architecture, that, then how come it's also using the decoupled CMS architecture? Well, previously WordPress used to use the traditional architecture. As we can see that when the decoupled CMS came, it has already taken a lot of benefits, uh, benefits with it. So that's why nowadays WordPress is using a lot of uh, uses in decoupled architecture, which is which has already increased the security and other systems. So uh, you guys will be amazed to know that WordPress is also using the headless architecture. And our next speaker will explain everything about the headless part. Uh, to the next slides and i would request mushfiq to explain the headless part yeah thank you shushmita for giving us a nice brief on cms as well as the traditional and the decoupled cms now let's see some of the core feature or the functionality of headless so in headless cms it consists the data and the backend and the api there is no front end or any presentation layer is available it delivers all of its data through the backend API and the web server. So for the front end, we can actually choose any front end technology you like. So let's see some of the example of headless CMS, most popular headless CMS. Okay. So before that, if we visit the Jamstack website, there is a list of all kinds of headless CMS, which are currently available in the market. Now, if you see, visit that site, that time you can see there are almost 91 headless CMS, which is exist for now. Okay, all are good. So which one we should choose? So based on our requirement, we have to choose among those CMS. So the developers of edge innovation currently working with those below headless CMS. The first one is content stack. 
So the headless CMS is content stack, which is specially designed for enterprise and large scale business. And the Strapi, the second one is Strapi. This is the most flexible headless CMS, I must say. So it's open source CMS. We can actually customize the front end as well as the uh, back end of the structure of that Strapi CMS. And it actually saves the API development time. And it's also very good admin panel. Anyone can use that Strapi. It's very, uh, the CMS which uh, the beginner people can use. After moving to the second, uh, third one, which is Contentful. So Contentful is, I must say, this one is the most popular CMS. We can compare the Contentful with the WordPress CMS based on the CMS perspective. The environment of Contentful is bigger than other the CMSs. And at the last, there is Sanity. So Sanity is also a fully customizable headless CMS. So the next slide, when should we actually choose headless CMS, right? So if we have the below reason, that time it is ideal to switch in headless CMS. Like with headless CMS, we can scale our application very quickly. If we want the freedom, on our presentation layer or the front end layer, that time we can actually choose the headless CMS. Headless CMS is also the solution for enterprise business level, which we actually manage with headless CMS, we can actually manage multiple domain. Let me give you an example, like you have a website and that website has multiple language support. That time, all of those headless CMS has their inbuilt feature to manage those multiple local setting on their own environment. We don't have to take any hassle for that. Another most important thing is if the companies want to plan their application to the next level, such as like for now, a uh, website has on a uh, company have a website which has only uh, a website, but they want to launch a web application or they want to make a native application like mobile website that uh, mobile application that time they can actually uh, if they use previously headless CMS that time they don't have to worry about the data they can easily collect those all of the data from the legacy site and show on the front end for their specific service okay so another reason is if we have a bigger project manage, manage where we have to bigger, the, uh, the project is bigger, that time we can actually choose the headless CMS because it has some inbuilt functionality, which is the user role management and custom publishing management. So like the marketing team wants to launch a specific web, uh, website or a landing page on a very specific date, that time they don't have to actually depend for the developers to publish that content. They just immediately can put all of their content in a single day and pub make the schedule for publishing that content on a very specific day. So if I go back, uh, if I jump to the next slide. So with my previous working experience with headless CMS, I divided it with five steps for quick start on most of the headless CMS. So first one is creating the environment. First, we have to create the environment, then the environment will provide us some default API and some tokens. So with those token, we will actually configure our project through the front end layer. And then we have to do the content model and the content entry. So that is the most important part. So over there, we have to define the structure of or the blueprint of our project. It actually gives us freedom to define the overall structure or the schema of our project, we can actually build the pages and the components, and we can actually make the relation between them. And after building the model, we can we have to actually put our real content and fill up those model. After that, we have to publish all of our content from the CMS. And for retrieving our content, the first part in first part we are actually creating environment and that time we are actually getting some api with those api we can actually collect all of the all of our data and the final part is displaying our content so as we already know like 
using headless CMS, we can actually choose all of our preferred technology. Like for the web, we can actually choose React or Angular or the PHP, Ruby on Rails, whatever we like. For mobile application, we can actually choose React Native or Flutter or Ionic. So there is that kind of freedom is there for using headless CMS and the presentation layer. Okay, now let's see some pros and cons of headless CMS. Let's see some advantages first on the headless CMS. So with headless CMS, we can actually manage our content on the multiple channel. It means with headless CMS, content can be published in multiple channel. If the number of the device and the channel engaged with the content is increased, headless CMS is your main solution. It actually, Fits the general content management theory, which is COPE. COPE means create once and publish everywhere. And it has fastest content editing interface. Like in traditional CMS, users can spend their time, effort, and resource to content management and as well as content editing. On the other hand, headless CMS user can avoid all of this. They do not have to deal with this kind of things. It's also highly flexible. As the content is served through the API, there is high flexibility to using the headless CMS. Developers can work with different technologies and framework without having to worry about the contents. And it's also a future-proof business. Why? Because headless is compatible with all of the latest technology is available in the market. It also lets our business to perform better compared to other CMS. We can actually say this is the latest trend. So it's also highly scalability. It actually gives us the ability to manage our content from the single points. It allows developers to change with frameworks and language and tools without affecting the content because the content is separated on the headless part itself. And with headless CMS, we can do this thing very easily. So it's also improved the security. Why? Like there is a single point of content be connection between the content and the take stack. So the surface area is very secure and with headless CMS compared to the traditional CMS. So headless is also compatible with publishing component on multiple device platform and channels. Ap apart from this, this is also compatible for with the latest tools and technologies. Okay, now let's see some of the limitations of headless CMS. So yeah, the headless CMS has no any inbuilt presentation layer functionality. We need to manage the infrastructure as well as the presentation layer from ourselves. So those in some cases, it may be advantages and shifting to headless CMS means temporarily you may lose some of your existing functionality or your data. Oh, guys, uh, here it's not actually a disadvantages because in some cases it actually it's the advantages, Mushfik, if you agree to me. Because in some cases we can see that uh, removing the front end layer is going to be beneficial to move the, uh, to make the site more flexible and uh, to uh, speed up the site. Right. We can also make this thing as a uh, advantage as well. Yeah, like, exactly. Because of this reason, we are actually moving to headless CMS for the freedom of the presentation layer, which means the front end layer, right? Yeah, so, so yeah, I am almost done with my, with my part. One last thing I must say, like headless CMS is the future. Our traditional CMS is getting old. Now it is high time to switch to the headless CMS. But that's all from my side. Now I will jump to my team. Hey, Afras, can you please discuss and uh, describe about our audience why SGI is so popular with headless services? Yeah, of course. Uh, the SGI is most popular for the headless services. It accesses to the largest certified team of developers, collaborative with a recognized brand successfully, and uncompromised quality assurance based on the client requirement. Moving on to the next slide. SJI partnerships. Okay. So SJI has recently a uh, partnership with uh, Contentful as a partner and Content Stack as a solution partner, Strapi as a community partner. The references to the above webinar that we have conducted, the links are as present. Stay tuned for the other webinars as well. Yeah. Thank you, everyone.